where do you think you're going with that wood? Right here, Sergeant. Just got some wood for my cook fire. Your cook fire? Here in front of your tent? Why not? I, I'll be careful with it. Oh, look around you. Do you really think that's the best idea? Uh, like I said, I'll be careful, Sergeant. No, 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 no. Have you not read our regulations? Yeah, if I could read, I'd read them. Soldier, we have a, a kitchen to do the actual cooking at. Come on, follow me. All right, Sergeant. All right. So without a mess hall or a cafeteria type situation in the 18th century, and with no dedicated cooks in the army as well, these armies would have to devise a way for these soldiers to safely and efficiently cook to feed a lot of people. And this company kitchen that you see in the background here is the solution to that problem. Now the concept of an earthen kitchen like this is very old, but the setup that you see here is per regulations of that time period of the 18th century. With these camps being fairly large, it's not possible to have one central kitchen to feed everybody. So they would have to break it down to a smaller level, to the company level. So every company within camp would have one of these earthen kitchens, typically situated along the back edge of these encampments. And then you would see 10 fireboxes, 10 cooking places dug out going all the way around. So that way each of the 10 common tents in the company would have a place to safely cook at the kitchen here. These kitchens are also going to save on fuel, so it's going to lessen the wood consumption because, of course, everybody would be using wood as a fuel in that time period. And this would also allow for the officers to keep an eye on everything happening at these kitchens, too. They want to make sure that these soldiers are properly cooking their food because, of course, improperly cooked food could lead to sickness. And, well, a sick soldier is not going to be able to do his job fighting or even marching between from place to place. Now food for these soldiers is of course going to be limited. It would be strictly rationed out to them. And this would mean that all of the soldiers, at least on the enlisted level, are receiving the same amounts and the same food as well. Now at the beginning of the war, Congress will authorize all sorts of different food rations to these soldiers. Um, but the unfortunate reality of the situation is if you read any of their journals and diaries, quite often they're going with very little. Quite often they're getting just kind of the bare minimum of those regulation rations. And that bare minimum translates into three quarters to a pound of salted meat per soldier per day. Sometimes it might be salted beef or salted pork like what we have on display here. And salting meaning it's usually in a brine salt water solution. You would also get a bread or flour ration every day. Sometimes it is just straight flour that would be rationed out to these soldiers, at least a pound of that, but quite often it comes to the soldiers in this form here. Hard bread, ship's biscuit, sea bread, maybe you know it by its 19th century term of hardtack. Doesn't matter what you call it, it's all the same thing throughout history, and of course it's uh, very aptly named as well. Now let's not forget that vegetable ration. Unfortunately, we're not talking about nice fresh vegetables being available every single day. Usually it's something like your dried beans or split peas. Sometimes you actually see rice being rationed out as a vegetable to these soldiers as well, especially more so in the southern colonies where it's commonly grown. Now, obviously you are limited by preservation methods in the 18th century. No refrigeration, right? So that is why you'll see that a lot of the food for these soldiers in that time is salted and dried. It's what stays preserved. It's also what can be transported in that time period too. Without the railroad system or an interstate system, you need to remember that this food would have to be transported either on wagons or on ships. So it could take a long time for this food to get to its destination. It's not necessarily about nutrition, of course. You can tell just from first glance that you are not getting a nice healthy balanced meal with this food here but it would give the soldiers the energy that they need to burn throughout the day to sustain them. So it's not about nutrition, it's certainly not about looks or taste either, but it's about making sure these soldiers have the energy that they need to burn throughout the day. Boiling would have been the preferred cooking method to ensure that the food was rehydrated and properly cooked through. This method would take time, however, so the soldiers would have to start their cooking pretty early on in the day so that way the food would be ready for dinner at the midday meal in the 18th century. This would mean the soldiers would have plenty of time to try and devise other methods of cooking.
Once the food was done, the mess would gather and the soldiers would enjoy. Maybe. Again, the food necessarily wasn't all about nutrition, taste, or even looks. It was about energy and calorie intake. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and be sure to follow us on all of our social media channels.